everyone, it's Ralph Hobbs here. Um, with our current exhibition, Guardian Spirit, on in the gallery, it's a great opportunity to have a bit of a walk through the Western Desert and share some of the experiences I've had and, uh, and I suppose some of the, the reminiscing of the, the great artists that appear in the exhibition and some of their stories and hopefully give you a bit more of a sense of what these pictures are about. And it's the, the, the true magic of Indigenous art is sort of understanding some of the, the intricacies of, um, of the stories behind the paintings. I mean, the fact is, as I always say, we're never really going to understand them all because a lot of this information is sacred to the artists and particularly these first contact artists, which is you know, really extraordinary. But let's, let's go for a bit of a walk and, uh, and, and have a look at some of the places that uh, the great artists like Mrs. Bennett worked and, and painted and, uh, and, and what drove them. And the image that we have on the screen at the moment is Mrs. Bennett uh, out at a place called Punkleberry, which is on the Northern Territory, West Australian border. And this is part of the ceremony that is intrinsic to her paintings. And, you know, we'll unravel some of that just as we, we, we have a look at some of the works. But we were very privileged uh, a, a number of years ago uh, to be invited to experience the ceremony uh, and also uh, take some photos. And they were, uh, all, the, all the ladies involved were really adamant and uh, excited for uh, them to share this quite unique experience. In fact, to my understanding, I think it was the last time that this ceremony took place. Uh, now that a couple of the ladies are deceased, so it was a, a real moment in time. But before we get into that, let, let's have a look at the area we're talking about, because it is vast and it is uh, very um, close to our, um, I suppose, uh, psyche of Australia, this, this vast interior. Um, so I will just take you through uh, this. So on the screen at the moment, I've got a, I've got a map of the, the Western Desert and up in this corner uh, is uh, Alice Springs. And um, as we move down, if you can follow the, the cursor here, you'll see there's uh, Uluru and we keep going west out into the, the homeland. So the Pichinjara lands and then the Pintabi lands are up, up around here. Um, now this area, is incredibly remote um, and there are still outstations and, and townships that, that that operate there. It is um, Aboriginal land and it is um, you know, very challenging and, and incredibly dangerous at times to, to travel through in, in summer. It is phenomenally hot and when the rains come, the roads are impassable. Um, so just to, there's a few quite famous names on this map. Uh, up here in the top uh, right-hand corner, we have uh, Papunya, where the Western Desert Movement uh, really started in the early 70s. Um, and uh, going west, Mount Liebig, which we'll come to a little bit later, which was formed after, Mount, uh, after uh, Papunya had been settled to really, in many respects, to mitigate some of the intertribal uh, 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 problems that were happening between the different um, different groups uh, that had come in from the, in the desert. Um, here we have Kintor, which is where a lot of the Papunya artists uh, are located, and further west of that is Kirikira, and these, these names are important um, in the in the sort of annals of, of, uh, of history. Down here we have uh, Chukula, which is um, was started as an outstation for the Docker River community. And I'm sorry, we'll just go back uh, back to that. Uh, an outstation to the um, uh, Docker River area. And this is where um, there was a lot of um, a lot of the artists have spent a, a lot of time. This circle here is Punkleberry Rock Hole, and it goes under several different names, but the one I like to use Punkleberry. There's also Bunklebiddy, uh, and it's a really remarkable water hole, and um, which uh, a gorge system where there's permanent water, no matter how dry uh, the years are. All through this area here is Sand Dune Country. And up to the top 
over this area. Uh, the top left hand side of the map is the uh, Lake Mackay area. And um, when a lot of the, the family groups were encouraged to come out or heard about um, the, the water and food that was available in the, in the ration camps in places like Papunya and Mount Liebig in the 60s and 70s. Uh, it, it, was, uh, it, it was, these people were still living a, a, you know, an absolute um, nomadic life. So just to, to move on, um, to get to uh, the homelands, um, for those of you who, who went through the seminar, you'll see uh, I've, I've mentioned things like the um, all the all the various uh, signs and symbols, and this is this is notations written down by Jeffrey Barden, who was the the fellow at Papunya for a couple of years, who really encouraged the old men to start telling their stories in the community. And we have this notation, and and these are intrinsic marks that are, appear not only on uh, walls, they're used on ceremonial uh, paintings on bodies, and also obviously in paintings and, and sand as well. So well worth sort of investigating the, the um, these marks are not in themselves sacred, it's the combination and the way they're all put together uh, and uh, really, really interesting in themselves. So the photo we've got here is at Punkleberry and it's a really powerful uh, image for me. Um, and this was the ceremony that Mrs. Bennett, uh, Joanna Porter and Esther Giles, who are the two ladies in black that are seated um, to the left of, um, or to the right, sorry, of Mrs. Bennett. And this, this ceremony is a, 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 basically a um, fertility ceremony. So you can see the, the rock here with all the smaller rocks around it. Uh, and this rock is known as Minyari, which is a, a thorny desert lizard. Um, and I think I have a, a photo here. So this is the very famous lizard. And it's a, it's a, a lizard that was totemic um, throughout, throughout the desert. Area so this this ceremony um, the ladies all uh, arranged for us to tidy the whole thing up. It had been a number of years since it had happened, and piled up all the rocks in a particular way so they're around the the larger rock. And it's just interesting that this place is where they had been coming for since basically the dawn of time to have the ceremony, and they would sing and and there were different layers of uh, or hierarchical layers of, of where everyone sat. And, um, and that was a very important, um, uh, important part of the, the ceremony. And as we go through, uh, I'll just keep going here. You can see the painting um, of, this is of Mrs. Bennett. So that, that ceremonial site is indicated through this area here where you see the half semicircles of people sitting around and then the major rock hole in the center of the painting and the lineal, uh, the more straight lines being the, the tali or sand hills, um, which uh, as you go uh, east from that, uh, that area, it goes out into a vast uh, plain of uh, sand, sand dunes all the way through to uh, Uluru. Um, now, these stories were very much put together to help people understand how they, how they uh, were to survive and to, um, and in this ceremony that we're watching here, you can see it's a sort of formal and informal in its own way. So Mrs. Bennett leading, leading the, the, the chorus of singing and uh, Mrs. Porter pointing to the, to the hills behind which are the, the Punkleberry Range and uh, well, Peterson, Peter, the Peterson Range. But it's, it's a, uh, a really interesting way that uh, they would tell their stories and allow people to uh, get a, um, uh, understand them. So the little kids were there and then the, the next generation behind the ladies. And so it wasn't only the singing 
but it's also the act of dancing and then also the the act of uh, painting the body. And you can see Mrs. Bennett has um, painted herself up uh, for, for the ceremony as well. There's a, this photo I, I thought was really interesting, just to put it in some sort of perspective. This is a, a, a photograph um, of uh, a ceremony of the uh, Aranda uh, men. And it was done on the, the photo was taken in the turn of the century in, in the late uh, and the early 1900s of, um, from the Bourbon Spencer ex, uh, expedition, where they went in to the interior and were documenting a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the people that were there. And what I find so fascinating about this particular photograph is when you have a look at the, the paintings that are on the bodies of the men, and then you relate those paintings as on the bodies to contemporary paintings now, much of the same iconography, much of the story, much of the, the mark making is the same. It's so intriguing. It's so beautiful. Now, don't forget that these, these ceremonies were transient. So uh, the people out here would have very few possessions and they'd have some sacred objects, which would generally speaking be remain buried in certain places. But they would carry and, and uh, uh, carry their knowledge uh, through song and ceremony. And uh, the paintings would appear in ceremony. And um, you can see you know, rock hole symbols. You can see sand dune tali symbols. You can see all sorts of other sacred imagery and adornment. Um, which is the, the fundamental basis of a lot of the, the paintings that we see now, um, which is uh, really fascinating. This painting here is by um, uh, Joanna Porter, and it is, again, so Mrs. Porter, Mr. Giles, and Mrs. Bennett all really painted around that area of Punkleberry, which is you know, on that uh, Northern Territory, Western Australian border. And there are variations on, on a similar theme. So this, this, uh, these rock hole or these mountains that, are, that appear, um, they call them pulley. And you'll see the crevice um, from the middle section. And that would be the, the gully, uh, the erosion gully as it, as it rolls into the rock holes. And then this beautiful sort of, um, lyrical nature of the way uh, all the all the key areas were linked together through sand hills and, and this quite strong aerial perspective um, really very very beautiful so as we go north if you think about the map that we were talking about before uh chukula which is north of punkleberry uh chukula is uh, the name of this particular rock hole um and sitting here with the ladies and um, this rock hole is very very important because there isn't a lot of water in this area and this was permanent water and you can see that it's not a large rock hole and back in the day it was even smaller so what happened the 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 graziers who brought the cattle up blasted the hole larger so the the cattle could get in to drink it drink from it now what the ultimate problem with that has been is that the the camels that were uh, are feral that were let loose in the desert and absolutely thrived and have pretty well destroyed the surrounding environment um because they all come to that water hole now that they can get into it as well it's also fouled up the water to an extent but this 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 water hole is um it was a really important part because they the, they used to walk out from Punkleberry and, and they could go to certain areas where they knew the, the water was. And this place is, um, the, the ladies took us uh, the back road to this water hole, past a couple of other key sites in their paintings. And, uh, and I just remember sitting in the, in the um, driver's seat, just wondering where the heck we were going and, and really thankful that they um, that they knew. Now, also to understand that both Mrs. Porter, S. And Giles, and um, Mrs. Bennett all lived a nomadic life. They they didn't um, they didn't meet uh, white people until they were um, in their late teens, and it 
it was uh, certainly uh, not the most pleasant of experiences uh, uh, to begin with either. This is another site near Trukula, um, which is a, a, a site where we have Esther Giles here pointing out to us the, the spirit that lives in this particular waterhole. So it's quite different from the other one, which is a more permanent waterhole. This you can see is dried up at the moment. And um, as, as I sort of was there and you know, went to you know, walk into it, she grabbed me and said, no, 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 you, you can't go in there because the spirit was in a very important site so it, it, it sort of reminds me of how important it is to understand the, the the law and to understand law in the terms of these people it's not uh, an arbitrary thing it is something that is made to so people um, can survive uh, so law and license to live and all these sorts of things bind together in in the desert and, and become a really important part um, of the whole experience. So this spirit uh, that lives here is a protective of the waterhole and, and you can see how uh, vast and flat this country is. And this is, this is one of Esther Giles's paintings, which really talks about the, the different waterholes and the sand dune country and the traveling lines between waterholes. So being nomadic, they would, they would uh, travel between areas without over um, utilizing any of the resources and keeping moving and keeping uh, traveling. And um, this particular work is a great example of, of, of that, of demonstrating the country, the change in the country, um, the key components in it and the traveling uh, paths between them. Uh, one of the interesting things that um, Esther and both uh, her and Mrs. Porter uh, both carried in their in their handbags a uh, um, photos of when when they had come out of the the desert. So this is a, a photo of Esther, her son, and her husband when they had first come into the community. So it was a it was a long time before. It was a really uh, very poignant, very beautiful. Uh, image of of their of, um, uh, of them in a in a, a time gone past. This photo was actually taken out uh, at Punkleberry. Moving along, uh, as we we go up, there's just this uh, extraordinary country that um, that we love to to um, travel in, and and uh, I think this photo is a is a great example of of what people think about um, when you're thinking about the interior, the red earth, the, 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 the shrubs, the mountain ranges. This is the Mount Liebig range, which is west of the Papunya. It's between Mount Liebig and, and uh, the township of Mount Liebig and Papunya. And this was taken a number of years ago after a big rain out there. So the desert really be, you know, comes alive and you can see all the wildflower and there's, and there's plenty of food and, um, it's a stunning area. On this particular trip, it, it, there'd been a lot of rain and, and a lot of the roads were actually pretty close to impassable. So, you know, we were, we were sort of sliding all over the place. It's, it becomes quite precarious, but really beautiful sunrise on the, on the Liebig Range. Now, why this is important, this photo is important to the, the exhibition is that there is a work by Wenger Napoljari. And Wenger, who lived most of a days um, out in Mount Liebig um, had come to the, um, the boar at Mount Liebig with her father, Shorty Lunkata, and they'd come across a windmill, which the windmill is still there, and this is it. And there was no township there, but they were, they were heading um, out into you know, one of the, the ration stations, and um, they came across a windmill, and Shorty started throwing spears at the windmill, and you know, when you always tell the story that you know wasn't it amusing that um, that that this is happening? You didn't know what it was, and they thought it was a devil. And um, but that's just how raw this is, and how uh, close um, that the 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 importance of of um, the stories were for these people to to, to be able to stay alive. Um, the last of the the nomads. Um, 
came out in um, 1984, a place called Kirikira, which is west of Kintore, if you go back to that map, and it became quite famous. I remember it actually happening on the front page of the newspapers, and it was really interesting because you know, I, I, I think the, the headline was The Lost Tribe Found, and the amusing thing about that is they weren't lost, they knew exactly where they were, but they'd been encouraged to, to come out uh, where there'd been water. Now, a number of those people uh, are still uh, around and a few of them have become quite famous artists as well. Um, but you know, this, is a, this is a legacy that is uh, really, really uh, continuing on to this day. So this is a Shorty Lankata painting, which um, I've mentioned a, a couple of times in talks, which is a, a beautiful example. Now Shorty is the father of Wenger and you can see that iconography and this painting was done in the early 70s, about 72, at Papunya. He was one of the founders of the Papunya movement. And you can see that intricate fine dotting that appears there and, and how that relates really strongly to uh, even um, the Esther Giles painting that was there and uh, more so to Wenger, who learned to paint uh, sitting beside him. And you can see these major works by her and the incredibly fine dotting um, that she does in this monumental work uh, which is five meters by two meters long and has been painted with a toothpick now because we've been talking about the importance of water in the in this country and you can see uh, these two large rock holes and you think about that rock hole that mrs porter and esther and i are sitting around um, in this vast area how important it was for people to know and how to find it and um, and the symbolism that, that is uh, evoked through this. Now the the white mass of, on this painting which is so fascinating um, delicately done on a vast area really echoes the country but it's also uh, has a, an ebb and flow about it so whilst there are all sorts of different tones they've actually just used white paint or oh, she's used white paint on on a black background and it reads in all sorts of different greys. Now, it also reads as sand hills, as the country. And Wenji used to say, it's actually also about the water. So good water and bad water. So some of it's salt water, some of it's better water. So even within the paintings, there are, there's a duality and a diff different meaning uh, within all of these, uh, within all of these things. So, the intrinsic important thing to understand about Indigenous art, particularly from this area, as I keep banging on to anyone who wants to listen, is the, is the fact that the story, the songs, the paintings, the icons, the, the, the marks are all the one thing, particularly for the people where the law is really strong. So whenever you would see uh, Whenever Mrs. Bennett or Esther Giles or, or Mrs. Porter would see a painting uh, or, or a photograph of Punkleberry, they would immediately start singing. Mrs. Bennett would uh, start moving around. She wasn't very firm on her feet, but effectively dancing, really strongly talking about the law of the land. And for me, it's really important. It gets into your bones, this whole... Um, uh, narrative that they're that they they're talking about that they're engaging with and and so exciting to to be a part of and and that is the the the, the thing that um, seeps out over the years of looking at at great um, paintings by these these sorts of artists where there is this other layer and that other layer is um, on the surface incredibly beautiful quite hypnotic. But there's a mystique there that no matter how much we know, we're never going to know it all. And that is the beauty of bodies of work like this. So I hope you enjoy the exhibition. I hope that gives you a little bit more insight into uh, what this uh, show is all about.